It's Wednesday the 19th of June and it's exactly 12 years today since Julian went into the Embassy of Ecuador which granted him political asylum and 12 years on I'm visiting Julian in a high security prison but this this period of our lives I'm confident now has come to an end and I think that by this time next week Julian will be free. Julian Assange is free. He left Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison on the morning of 24 June after having spent 1,901 days there. He was granted bail by the High Court in London and was released at Stansted Airport during the afternoon. Where he boarded a plane and departed the UK. WikiLeaks published groundbreaking stories of government corruption and human rights abuses, holding the powerful accountable for their actions. As editor-in-chief, Julian paid severely for these principles and for the people's right to know. Julian Assange could be back in Australia within days after the WikiLeaks founder was freed from a UK prison. He's set to face a judge in a remote American court thanks to a shock plea deal with the US government. Mr Julian Assange has legal proceedings scheduled in the United States. Regardless of the views that people have about Mr Assange's activities, the case has dragged on for too long. Yeah. There's nothing to be gained by his continued incarceration and we want him brought home to Australia. Julian Assange is expected to plead guilty to a single charge of violating America's Espionage Act. The court will sentence him to 62 months, but credit him with 62 months already served in London's Belmarsh Prison and free him. Tonight, his private jet has landed in Bangkok after a 12-hour flight from the UK. He's heading to the Pacific island of Saipan in the Marianas, an American court to sentence him at 9am tomorrow. And a few minutes ago, Chief Reporter Chris Reason spoke with Julian Assange's brother, Gabriel Shipton. We've got all our fingers and toes crossed, and I, and I hope the Australian public does as well, that uh, he can make it back here uh, safe and sound. This plea deal has saved his life and I think uh, we have to look at it like that and really the effort from the Australian government in coordinating everything and getting this deal together and Julian on a plane, uh, we're very thankful uh, for that as well and to all the Australian people uh, who it wouldn't have been possible for the government to do this uh, without their support as well. Um, so I think we're just so relieved that uh, Julian is free now uh, and he's survived. He's survived this ordeal. Julian will owe 520,000 US dollars which he is obligated to pay back to the Australian government for charter flight VJ199. He was not permitted to fly commercial airlines. The next stage in the proceedings was to be the appeal that he had been given leave to make in London. Was that is that what changed the direction? Is that what brought this on, that he was to have a, a proper appeal heard in London? Look, I think it's one of the elements, uh, of course. Uh, the appeal uh, has really, the appeal in London uh, boiled down to the freedom of expression grounds uh, related to the Extradition Act in the UK. I don't believe the US DOJ really wanted to have a, uh, an appeal around these freedom of expression grounds being heard in the UK courts. This is the saga that's been going on for 12 years, the saga of Julian Assange that may finally be over today. Uh, Julian Assange uh, was flown from London to Saipan. He arrived this morning via Bangkok for a quick refuelling. Uh, he arrived just under an hour ago and he's expected at this court uh, to face court here at 9am local time. Mr Assange, any comments? United States of America versus Julian Paul Assange coming up for an initial appearance. I'd like to turn to another preliminary question that is a matter that all uh, criminal cases are subject to question to, which is in regards to any potential victim of the offense. Under the Crime Victims Act, any victim of the offense has a right to notice of any 
public court proceeding involving the crime of the accused and to attend that proceeding. Is there any individual victim in this case that would be so required to be noticed? Mr. McKenzie, on behalf of the government. Your Honor, as we've stipulated to in the agreement, there are no individual victims that qualify for pursuance of that act. All right. So hearing that there is no individual victim, then that preliminary matter of notice is not applicable. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. The information does charge you with one count. The offense is conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information. At this point, for purposes of the charge, the sole count in count one, are you, in fact, prepared to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty? What is your decision? Guilty to the information. All right. In fact, before I accept your guilty plea to the information, according to the plea agreement that is a condition of your plea, there is also a provision at paragraph 22. You are required to take action within your control to cause a return to the United States or the destruction of any such unpublished information in your possession. Your Honor, the government is in receipt of his sworn affidavit and is satisfied that he has satisfied the terms of paragraph 22. Are you fully satisfied with the counsel representation and advice given to you in this case by your attorney, Mr. Polo? It might depend on the outcome of the hearing, but otherwise, I am. The defendant, Julian Paul Assange, agrees to waive indictment by a grand jury in this district and agrees to plead guilty to an information charging the defendant with conspiracy to obtain documents, writings, and notes connected with the national defense and willfully communicate documents related to the national defense from a person having both lawful and unauthorized possession of same in violation of 18 U.S.C. section 793G. The defendant understands that this is a felony which carries a maximum penalty of not more than a 10-year term of imprisonment. Page 22 of the plea agreement around lines 19 to 20. In print, it says Julian Paul Assange, defendant. Is that your signature above the line, sir? It is. Are you here to enter a guilty plea to the charge, the sole count in the information of your own free will because you are, in fact, guilty of that charge? I am. For purposes of your case, the government was prepared to establish that for this conspiracy, there was an agreement that was formed by two or more persons that you, Mr. Assange, knew the purpose of the agreement, then deliberately joined the conspiracy. One of the alleged members knowingly performed an overt act as charged in the information. In this case, your plea agreement specifically notes that you agree with the United States that the objects of the conspiracy were to, one, obtain documents connected with the national defense, and two, you willfully communicate documents relating to the national defense. At this time, I'm asking you to explain to me what is it that you did that will constitute the crime charge? Working as a journalist, I encouraged my source to provide information that was said to be classified in order to publish that information. I believe that the First Amendment protected that activity, but I accept that, as written, it's a violation of the Espionage Act statute. So you had certain belief, but you understand what the law actually says as well? I believe the First Amendment and the Espionage Act are in contradiction with each other, but I accept that it would be difficult to win such a case given all the circumstances. There is a difference between what we call a nolo contendo plea versus a personal acknowledgement. Yes, Your Honor, this is not a nolo contendo or an offer plea. Mr. Assange believes that the conduct at issue should be protected by the First Amendment, but understands that no court has held that there is a First Amendment defense to the Espionage Act. He understands that his conduct violates the terms of the Espionage Act and is pleading guilty on that basis. All right. Let me hear from Mr. Assange. Is this, in fact, your understanding? That's correct. 
Okay. You already acknowledged that the information that you solicited from your sources were classified. The information charges you with information that you, in fact, received as being secret. Is this the level of classified information that you understand you received? Yes. Mr. McKenzie, if the matter, in fact, went to trial, what would the government be prepared to prove? Between in or about 2009 and continuing until in or about at least 2011, Julian Paul Assange knowingly and unlawfully conspired with former U.S. Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning to willfully and unlawfully obtain, deliver, transmit, and communicate documents relating to the national defense, including classified information, to persons not entitled to receive such items and information, including the defendant himself. The defendant also publicly encouraged people to obtain the information he desired and to send that information to the defendant at WikiLeaks. Information is classified as secret if, it is, if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause serious damage to the national security of the United States. Between January 2010 and May 2010, Manning used U.S. government computer systems to download hundreds of thousands of documents and reports, many of them classified at the secret level and relating to the national defense. Approximately 90,000 Afghanistan war-related uh, significant activity reports, 400,000 Iraq war-related significant activity reports, 800 Joint Task Force Guantanamo detainee assessment briefs, and 250,000 U.S. State Department cables. During this time period, Manning also downloaded multiple classified files relating to the U.S. military's rules of engagement. Manning, without authorization, electronically sent them to the defendant, understanding that at least some of them would be publicly posted on WikiLeaks' website. During the time period surrounding Manning's passage of classified materials to WikiLeaks, Manning and the defendant communicated via online platforms about Manning's progress. In or about 2010 and 2011, the defendant publicly disclosed via WikiLeaks website hundreds of thousands of documents that Manning had previously taken without authorization and given to him. Some of these raw classified documents were publicly disclosed without removing or redacting all the personally identifiable information relating to certain individuals who shared sensitive information about their own governments and activities in their countries with the U.S. government in confidence. At this point, let me know if there's anything that was represented by the government through Mr. McKenzie's reading of the facts to be incorrect to your personal knowledge. No, Your Honor. As to paragraph 19, this is a waiver of the Freedom of Information Act to obtain any of the records pertaining to the U.S. Department of Justice criminal investigation, extradition, and or prosecution of yourself. Do you understand and do you, in fact, waive this um, FOIA right? I do. Please rise as I will ask for your plea. Mr. Julian Paul Assange, as to the sole count in the information in this case, conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information how do you now plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty to the information. Guilty to the sole count of the information? Yes. So not it. All right, Mr. Sanj, please be seated. The plea of guilty is therefore accepted. The defendant is now judged guilty of that offense. As to credit for time served, that the defendant, Mr. Sanj, is entitled to credit for time served for the entire period he has been incarcerated pending extradition at His Majesty's Prison, Belmarsh. And at the time of this agreement, has served approximately 62 months in prison. That detention in Belmarsh was a direct result of the government, the United States government seeking the extradition. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Given the range as calculated at 41 to 51 months, with credit for time to serve as agreed to by the parties, all right, and for purposes of sentencing in regards to any uh, restitution, the government previously identified that there is no individual victim, so there won't be any restitution pursued, and that there's no forfeiture. First, timing matters. I will say this. If this case were brought before me sometime near about 2012 or thereabouts, without the benefit of what I know now, which is that you've actually served a period of imprisonment, 
that based on what we've just discussed is at least five years. There's another significant fact. The government has indicated there is no personal victim here. That tells me, and I can surmise, that the dissemination of the information that occurred in this instance did not result in any known physical injury. Ms. Manning did end up serving seven years in imprisonment, and a former president determined that seven years in prison was sufficient. So in comparison to Ms. Channing's actual prison time, it appears that your 62 months imprisonment is fair and reasonable and proportionate to Ms. Manning's actual prison time. And so for these reasons, given the factual basis that accounts the whole saga of events that constitutes the basis for this very serious espionage, espionage charge against you. And given, as I said, what is, in fact, the status of affairs here today in the year 2024, I am, in fact, sentencing you to a period of time served. With this pronouncement, it appears that you will be able to walk out of this courtroom a free man. I need to still make sure you understand that under the terms of your plea agreement, you did waive certain rights of appeal. The other matter that the United States agreed to proceed with is a withdrawal of the pending request in the United Kingdom for the extradition of the defendant pursuant to paragraph 10B of the plea agreement. With that, Mr. Mr. Uh, Assange, apparently it's an early happy birthday to you. I understand your birthday is next week. That's correct, Your Honor. It's probably the first one you celebrate outside uh, a prison or any type of a limitation. So I hope you will start your new life in that positive note. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you, Your you. Honor. We stand adjourned. Yeah, they can. Uh, Barry Pollack, uh, criminal defense lawyer for Julian Assange. In the hundred years of the Espionage Act, it has never been used by the United States to pursue a publisher, a journalist, like Mr. Assange. Uh, Mr. Assange revealed truthful, important, and newsworthy information, including revealing that the United States had committed war crimes, and he has suffered tremendously. It is appropriate, though, for this fight to end, and it is appropriate for the judge, as she did today, to determine that no additional incarceration of Mr. Assange would be fair, would be appropriate, and it is time for him to be reunited with his family. By agreement uh, with the government, we decided that this was an appropriate venue. Uh, it is closest to Australia. It allowed us to come in, allowed Mr. Assange to walk out a free man, and to quickly get back to his family in, in Australia. The court today determined uh, that no harm was caused by Mr. Assange's publications. Uh, Mr. Assange did not plead guilty to and would not plead guilty to 17 counts of the Espionage Act, computer hacking. Uh, there was a very narrow agreed upon set of facts here, and Mr. Assange acknowledges that, of course, he accepted documents from Chelsea Manning and published many of those documents because it was in the world's interest that those documents be published. Uh, un unfortunately, that violates the terms of the Espionage Act. That's what we acknowledge today. Uh, we also said, and Mr. Assange said very clearly, that he believes there should be First Amendment protection for that conduct. But the fact of the matter is, as written, the Espionage Act does not have a defense for the First Amendment. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jen Robinson. I'm Julian Assange's counsel. He faced 175 years in prison for publishing evidence of war crimes, human rights abuse, and U.S. wrongdoing around the world. Today, he pleaded guilty to an offence for having published information in the public interest, for which he's won journalism awards the world over and been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize every year for the past decade. How does it feel to be a free man, Mr. Assange? Congratulations! How do you feel about the sentence, sir? Quick comment about the sentence. What do you think of the sentence, Mr. Assange? Don't stop. Don't stop what you're doing. Don't stop, it's not over. Thank you, y'all. Not over. Can't There's a cabal good? out there that needs to be exposed. Julian Assange is on his way home to Australia. A short time ago, a United States court in Saipan accepted a plea agreement between Mr. Assange and the United States Department of Justice. Mr. Assange has since boarded a flight to Australia and will land in Australia later today.
I'm monitoring the the flight flight radar. I'm very nervous and and excited about meeting Julian at the airport. Because he was an Australian, the prosecutors would, would argue that he is not entitled to First Amendment protection. And so the courts in the UK were about to have a hearing on that uh, as well, which I don't think the DOJ was uh, very eager to participate in. OK, Gabriel, I can report to you that just as you've been speaking, your brother has touched down <laughs> back in Australia. We're still, we're still waiting for your brother to come out. What's he up to? Yeah, where is he? Come on. Well, like, <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting, but I just wanted to mention, you know, in, in the court in, uh, in the Mariana Islands, uh, the judge actually acknowledged that, uh, that uh, the US government could not find anybody who came to any harm in relation uh, to uh, Julian publishing these documents. Julian actually devised uh, ways uh, to use technology to uh, identify names in these documents and, and redact uh, these sorts of names. And what those publications showed uh, was evidence of state criminality, uh, war crimes, uh, journalists being mowed down uh, by a helicopter gunship, uh, and then the people who came to rescue them uh, being killed as well. So I think really focusing on what these publications revealed uh, about uh, how the United States wages wars uh, about torturing Guantanamo Bay, about how 13-year-olds uh, were being kept uh, at Guantanamo Bay uh, in, in Cuba. Uh, that, that's what these documents reveal. He collaborated with news organisations all over the world uh, in publishing those documents, and that's why you have the New York Times writing to President Biden calling on him to uh, drop these charges because of the threat they pose. I think he's about to get off the plane now. <laughs> uh, this saga which has dragged on for so many years and there we see <laughs> the first there image. There he is. Uh, raising yeah. his yeah. fist. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's home. There he is. Yeah, welcome home, Julie. Oh wow, what a moment, look at that. <laughs> so Julian Assange there embracing his wife and father after this extraordinary saga which has dragged on for so long. Earlier tonight, but you probably knew this, Julian Assange was reunited with his family here in Australia. His arrival home ends a long-running legal process. A plea agreement between Mr Assange and the United States, States Department of Justice was accepted by a US court in Saipan earlier today. I am very pleased that this saga is over. And earlier tonight, uh, I was pleased to speak with Mr Assange to welcome him home. Good evening, everyone. We are absolutely delighted to be home. Uh, it's a very emotional return home to Australia. It was a very long journey home to Australia. It started two days ago. We are absolutely delighted after a very long and complex negotiation with the US government that we've reached this plea deal that enabled him to come home to Australia as a free man. In order to win his freedom, Julian pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage for publishing evidence of US war crimes, human rights abuse, uh, human rights abuse and US wrongdoing around the world. That there were uh, civilian casualties exponentially greater than the United States government had admitted in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is journalism. The Prime Minister was the first person to get on the phone to speak to Julian. Julian thanked him and the team uh, and told the Prime Minister that he had saved his life. 
This is a huge win for Australia that our Prime Minister stood up to our ally, the United States, and demanded the return of an Australian citizen. Uh, the United States agreed uh, that they are not going to bring any other charges against Julian for any conduct, any publications, any news gathering, uh, anything at all that occurred prior to the time of the plea. I wish to thank the Prime Minister Albanese. I'd also like to thank the Australian people who have made this possible. It took millions of people. It took people working behind the scenes, people protesting on the streets for days and weeks and months and years. And we achieved it. Julian wanted me to sincerely thank everyone. He wanted to be here. But you have to understand what he's been through. He needs time. He needs to recuperate. Julian should never have spent a single day in prison. But today we celebrate because today Julian is free. The fact is that Julian is will always defend human rights, will always defend victims. Uh, he's always done that. Uh, and that's just part of who he is. He is deeply principled. And he remains deeply principled and unafraid. I do think it is important when we talk about Julian Assange to remind the world that the actions um, for which he was indicted and for which he has now pled guilty are actions that put the lives of our partners, uh, our allies, and our diplomats at risk, especially those who work in dangerous places like Afghanistan and Iraq. This was some years ago now, almost 15 years ago, so I think the world has forgotten much of it. But if you recall, when WikiLeaks first disseminated uh, and published State Department documents, State Department cables, they did so without redacting names. Uh, they just threw them out there for the world to see. And so um, the documents they published gave identifying information of individuals who were in contact with the State Department that included uh, opposition leaders, human rights activists around the world um, whose positions were put in some danger because of their public disclosure. It also chilled the ability of American personnel to build relationships and have frank conversations with them. And at the time, those of you who covered the State Department uh, at the time will probably remember that in the days leading up to that release, the State Department really had to scramble to get people out of danger, to move them out of harm's way. It was an extraordinary uh, effort performed by dozens of government officials around the world, but that doesn't change the danger that those actions put innocent people all around the world in um, through no fault of their own. And that's, of course, not even to mention the, the further actions by WikiLeaks down the road to essentially serve as a conduit for Russian intelligence uh, interfering in a U.S. presidential election. Not so Sorry, well, not so I, I actually did cover the State Department back then, and I, I don't remember there being any public um, uh, there was a public concern that was raised about the potential security risk posed to uh, sources uh, who might have been quoted. Was there actually any? Or did you ever discover anyone who was injured, killed, uh, had to go into hiding so, uh, because of them? So a few things about that. One, I can't give you a definitive answer, only because I wasn't here at the time and so much time. And okay, so, but I, you hold just on. So, said, oh, oh, no, but, 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 no let, me, my, Matt, just, let me finish. I have a full answer on it. Okay. One, I can't speak to that because it was some years ago and I don't have a full you know, accounting of what happened. But number two, the State Department did an extraordinary amount of work when we found out that these cables were going to be published to get people out of harm's way, to go around and look at what might become public and take action so people that would be put in danger. Um, would be put out of harm's way. But third, you know, if you drive drunk down the street and get pulled over for drunk driving, the fact that you didn't crash into another car and kill someone doesn't get you out of the uh, uh, 
of your, the reckless actions and the endangerment that you put your fellow citizens in. And it's the same thing, the same principle applies here. Right. Well, I, 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 and I, I don't think that it does. But the fact of the matter is, is that the State Department has been, at least as far as I know, and maybe I'm wrong, um, but has been, has never been able to point to anyone who uh, was compromised or killed or, you know, put, put, put at risk because, because, because of this. Their identities were compromised. The State Department well, went to great work to get people out of harm's way to prevent that what, very action from happening. Do you know how many people about? Uh, as I said, this was some time ago. I was in the government at the time, not at the State Department. I'd have to go back and look at it. The judge noted that there were no victims of Mr. Assange's uh, behavior, which is part of the reason that the sentence was what it was. Do you disagree with that? Do you think there were victims of his actions? I'm not going to um, speak to a uh, comment made by a judge in a ruling that would be, never be appropriate for me to do so, but I'll stand by the comments I made just a moment ago. What? Hmm? You're not going to speak to a comment made by a judge. I mean, if he if he did, I didn't. I don't know that he did, but that's exactly the point of my question. Yeah, I, but I'm not. Earlier, I'm, I'm, which is that, that the State Department has never come up, even though it was one of the prime, quote unquote, victims of, of, of the, these leaks uh, was never able to identify anyone who uh, came under, who point, was killed or the, came under, came under. The, uh, I the think danger. the point I made a moment ago is, is an appropriate response to that. How did it feel last night to get home? It, I, I can't describe it. Uh, th there were so many tears. Everyone was so emotional. Uh, I finally got to embrace my husband as a free man and uh, we were both very very emotional and and so happy to to be together again this morning he's had good bread, uh, good bread. With, with lots of butter and uh, he he He's commented on the on the fresh uh, the smell of freshly ground coffee. He's slept in the, his first real bed uh, in in many years, uh, so he's he's starting to get the first taste of freedom. Uh, how he also saw the sun come up? Uh, how aware are, are the kids of what's going on at the moment, Stella? They they know our lives have have changed completely and their lives until now were uh, going to see their father in in a high security prison uh, once a week having to go through these checks uh, having only an hour with with their father uh, not being able to uh, play with him uh, show him around take him by the hand and 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 you know pull him to a, to the other side of the room all these things uh, will change and they're really excited about showing him the seals. There are those, uh, his opponents, who say he's an activist, he's not a journalist. If he were a journalist, he, he would have put more attention or more care into redacting names, etc. What do you say to that? WikiLeaks employed an extensive redaction process with all of their media partners and to say that he's not a journalist, he's won more journalism awards than any other journalist in Australia or around the world. Um, Stella, good morning to you. You're first up. Let's start with that kiss. <laughs> yes, it was a long time coming. <laughs> how, did it, how, did it, how did it all feel? Oh, we weren't allowed to kiss in Belmarsh Prison. Wow. Uh, so. Uh, it was it was the best the best day of my life. I, I, we were just crying and overcome by emotion. Everyone was crying <laughs> when we went into the lounge. Everyone was crying. I was still crying. Um, it was it was indescribable. It's incredible. We haven't had any privacy during the the time that he's been in Belmarsh Prison. All our phone calls were monitored, they were recorded. Mm -hmm. There was a little recording in the beginning that said this, this conversation is being recorded. They were only 10 minutes at a time. Uh, we haven't been able to speak on our own terms or privately for so long. And so this, uh, it, it wasn't just uh, the moment of, of seeing each other, but, but on completely different terms mm. as, uh, uh, than what we've had for, for until now. Mm. I can't tell you how relieved I have and happy I am for Stella and for the family and for Julian. You know, it's been a long time coming and to be there with Julian, to have, I walked him into the police station back mm. in December 2010 and to be able to walk him onto that plane in London. In the UK, if there had been an uh, appeal, he had been granted permission to appeal, 
the issue before uh, the High Court was going to be his ability to rely on constitutional protections in the U.S. for freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And it was only then that, the, that uh, there was a breakthrough in the negotiations and things started moving very quickly. I think that's uh, very telling. And if Julian pleaded guilty uh, in, in a federal court in Saipan, it's because he was pleading gu guilty to committing journalism. They're, they were very excited when they, when they found out that Daddy was coming home. I had to tell them gradually, so they were very, very excited. They were jumping on the sofa, and um, I managed to send the video of them reacting and jumping on the sofa uh, to, to Julian while he was, I think, in Saipan, uh, and he was, he was very, very pleased. Two years before this moment, Stella wrote the following. My Australian husband, Julian Assange, is fighting for his life from within the confines of a three by two meter cell in Britain's harshest prison, Belmarsh. If his extradition goes ahead, Julian faces a maximum 175 year prison sentence. When Julian is taken from his cell to the prison yard, he tilts his head up so his eyes can focus on the distance. If he narrows his eyes, the double razor wire above becomes a blur. Beyond is the open sky. Julian recently discovered a family of nesting magpies. He spotted their home subversively nestled between the razor wire. I think our family is like those magpies. When we are together, we are always a few metres from their nest. Our children, Gabriel, who is five, and Max, three, only have memories of their father within the brutal surroundings of Belmarsh Prison. On March 23, we were married in Belmarsh. The prison, normally filled with tragedy and isolation, was turned on its head for a few hours to celebrate our love and commitment. Our nest in the razor wire.